Hey guys, Outdoor Prepper, I want to welcome you back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about something very important that everybody should have, and that's a first aid kit. This is not just any first aid kit, this is a first aid kit that you can have at your home, you can take with you, take with you in your car, you could take with you on vacation, you could take it to your kids' sporting events. It's just kind of an all-around great kit. It's not that large. It's in a, a pretty decent sized bag that can hold a lot, but again, doesn't take up a lot of space. Let's even get a uh, let's get a quick measurement to just see what we're talking about here. Lengthwise on this bag, we're about 15 inches. Heightwise, we're about 8 inches. And depthwise, we're at about 10 inches, give or take. I bought this bag on Galls.com. That's G-A-L-L-S. For those that are not familiar, they sell a lot of uh, emergency equipment. Uh, they sell to EMS agencies, police, fire, rescue squads. Uh, and the bag itself was about $30. It was not overly expensive. It's actually a pretty nice bag. The bottom is rubberized, so you can put this down on, you know, grass, concrete. It's not going to damage the bag. It's not going to really damage anything. Um, and it's even got a pretty nice adjustable handle. So again, this is great. You keep it in your house. You keep it in a closet until you need it. Take it out to a sporting event with your children. Take it on vacation. Whatever the case. But we're not here for the bag, per se. We're here for the contents inside. So let's start. Your typical home first aid kit that maybe you buy at CVS has a couple of band-aids, some alcohol prep pads. Um, that's really it. Maybe it has aspirin. Maybe it has ibuprofen. Uh, but maybe it doesn't. This is a kit that I made and I think each and every one of you can make as well and should make as well because think about it. What type of injuries happen when you're at the house? Maybe a slip and a fall and you know you, you break a bone you get a serious cut. Maybe you're outside doing yard work. Uh, you, cut, you cut yourself pretty severely. Maybe you're using a, a saw for something and you get a pretty bad cut. Uh, maybe, God forbid, somebody's not breathing. Uh, there's, all di there's all different types of injuries, and this kit is obviously not going to help you for everything, but it'll help you for the vast majority. So let's just dive right in and see what we've got in the kit, uh, and then I'll kind of explain what's in here, why is it in here, this bag also Velcros, which is pretty nice, and you've got some uh, little loops up here that you could put maybe a pen light in. You could put, if you're uh, medically trained, you could put an oral uh, airway adjunct in here. Uh, there's a lot of stuff you can put in here, maybe a little pair of shears. So that, that's a pretty nice feature. It's got these two nice little side flaps. So I'm just going to kind of hyperextend these, that way we can clearly see inside the bag. And I'll even give a little tilt here, just so you can see we're not dealing with a massive bag here. I mean, it's it's not much bigger than the, the size of my hand, uh, the interior space, but it can hold a lot. So I am medically trained. I'm an emergency medical technician. So I have probably two items in here that maybe you won't have at home, one of them being the stethoscope. Um, but again, you don't need a stethoscope um, if you're not medically trained to take vital signs. This is really good for vitals. So maybe someone's not feeling well inside the home and I want to start by just taking their blood pressure, listening to some lung sounds, listening to their pulse. Um, I got a, you know, a fairly inexpensive stethoscope right there. To go along with that stethoscope though, obviously if you're taking vitals, you're going to want uh, a blood pressure cuff. So right here in the side pocket, you know, nice and folded up, I've got a blood pressure cuff. Uh, so that just kind of lives in the side pocket. And again, if you're not trained to take vitals, well, A, it's pretty easy. I think I'll do a, uh, an episode on how to take vital signs. Uh, specifically blood pressure. Um, but you can also look it up online. Um, but again, if you, this is not an item that you want in the bag, just remove it. So again, looking at the inside of the bag, what is in here and why? The first item I'm going to take out is just some tape. Uh, this can be picked up at CVS, your local pharmacy. Um, the reason I have the tape that is inside this plastic container is because if you have a roll of tape that is not inside a plastic container, sometimes in the extreme heat, if it's left in your car, the tape can start to kind of ooze a little bit and it gets sticky and it'll get on other items and it, you know, it might damage something. So that is why I get this. The tape is in a nice little plastic container. I'm not worried about it damaging anything else, uh, any of my other gear in here. So I'm going to put the tape down. Uh, next thing, this. This is a tourniquet. This is a Sam XT tourniquet. I still have it in the plastic, which is not a good idea. It, this should actually be taken out of the plastic and ready to go. So I actually will do that uh, for my personal kit here. And 
I gotta be honest, I've been on an ambulance for years as an emergency medical technician. And yes, these types of calls don't happen too often, but when they do, you really want a tourniquet. And I'm talking about like a severe bleed, a severe injury. You're outside, your, your husband, your son, somebody's using a chainsaw to cut some branches and it slips, God forbid, and you cut your arm, you cut your leg. Um, I had a call once where somebody was shutting a door and, and they pushed their hand to try to stop the door and all of a sudden it went through the glass pane and cut their, cut their wrist, cut a lot of their arm open pretty bad. Um, a tourniquet is very inexpensive. This, I, this Sam XT tourniquet, I think it cost me $30, uh, but it could really save a life. Uh, again, you're at a sporting event. Maybe it's in your car and there's, there's a car accident and someone is seriously you know, hemorrhaging. Not a bad item to have. What else do we have in the bag? So this right here, this is called an Olay's uh, pressure bandage. And I will go into how to use this in a later episode. Uh, but a pressure bandage is basically like an Israeli bandage, if you've heard of those. Um, and what it is is a bandage that you put on, on a wound or someplace that's hemorrhaging severely. And you start wrapping it tighter and tighter and tighter. So there's gauze on the injury. And as you tighten it, it gets tighter and puts more pressure uh, to try to control the bleeding. So this is a really good one. Um, I highly recommend the Olays. In addition to the Olays, I do also have um, a North American uh, rescue uh, bandage as well. This is a flat one. Uh, it just stores a little bit uh, more compact. And you might say, well, why do you have two in the bag? Listen, one of the major reasons why, why people call an ambulance or really need some assistance is because they're bleeding. Um, so I wanna be able to treat that. Maybe someone's got two injuries. Maybe I've used one up on a call, or my son, or my daughter, or my wife, my husband, whatever the case is, I've used one, and maybe I didn't restock, so at least I've got a backup in here. These are not expensive. They don't take up a lot of space. This is super thin. So this is just a different brand, same concept, North American Rescue uh, pressure dressing. Next up in the kit, I've got this uh, North American Rescue Personal Protective Equipment Kit. Uh, and basically what this is, is exactly what it says. It's a personal protective kit. Uh, well, you might say, why do you need that if this is my home first aid kit? Well, maybe you've got a, a visitor over. Maybe, again, you've taken this to your, your child's sporting game and somebody becomes injured. Maybe when you're out on vacation, somebody becomes injured. You don't know what they've got, what they don't have. Uh, this just has an N95. It's got some gloves. That's really it. Gloves, a mask, uh, some, a little gown, some stuff that you can use to protect yourself. Let's put that down. All right, speaking of the gown, the next kit here we have is the North American Rescue uh, Biological Personal Protective Kit. Same concept. If this kit is not being used for your immediate family <clears throat> or yourself and you're going to treat somebody else or help somebody else, maybe you want to put this on. Maybe you don't know what they have. <clears throat> Excuse me. Maybe they've got a, a severe hemorrhage, a severe bleed, and you want to just be a little extra careful. So in this kit, and I'll, I'll just read you the contents, it's got some gloves, it's got some antiseptic towelettes, it's got uh, a biohazard bag, a gown, and a little mask with a visor. This is probably overkill for most of the, uh, most of the injuries you're going to treat with this bag. It doesn't take up a lot of real estate. If and when the time comes that you actually need this, you're going to be really happy that you do have it. So that's just kind of my take on it. Next up in the kit, uh, I have a tiny little, uh, this is not an EpiPen, it's very similar to an EpiPen. It's called Check and Inject. Uh, it's a little vial of Epi and it's a little syringe. This is actually very specific in this kit for me. Um, I've actually gone into anaphylaxis before. I do have some allergies to things. So I've thrown this in the kit in case I need it and need to treat myself. Uh, if you have a child at home that has an EpiPen, you may want to stick an EpiPen in here. Uh, that way you've always got it with you when you take this bag uh, on, on vacations, events, or keep it in the house. Maybe you have uh, an allergy and you need an EpiPen. Great idea. This is basically a, just a very similar version to an EpiPen. Next up in the bag, again, we've got a little uh, rolled gauze. What can you do with this? Maybe you've got a small injury and you need to pack it with some gauze or wrap it with some gauze. That's basically what this is. Again, it's made by NAR, which stands for North American Rescue. I think they make some great stuff. It's neatly packaged. Uh, everything from North American Rescue has something red on it to indicate that you tear right here to, to just quickly open it up. This is not expensive stuff, but it's great 
uh, when you need it. Moving on into the kit, I've got some water gel. If you're not familiar with water gel, it's basically a company or a brand uh, that makes burn gel. Maybe you're cooking in the kitchen and you've spilled some hot oil, you burn yourself uh, on the stove, you touch something really hot, obviously put your hand under water, start cooling the injury down, but then you can wrap it with this burn dressing. Uh, I put this burn dressing in a Ziploc bag just in case the package were to get torn or somehow its contents spill. I don't want to you know, damage or mess up the rest of my kit. Uh, but like I said, really small, really compact. Uh, Size-wise, what are we looking at here? We're looking at a two inch by six inch dressing. Great to have. I've used these before on myself and others with, with burns in the kitchen. Moving along, I did say this was, you know, something that could be used for some sporting injuries. This is a SAM splint. Now this is a very small SAM splint because I chose to not put something larger in here. But again, maybe you're taking this kit to sporting events. Maybe you have children that are active with sports and they might have an injury. A SAM splint, for those of you that are unaware, is a splint and sometimes they, or they do come in longer splints in a roll that you can unroll and it's very malleable. You can bend this, you can use this to, to brace something and then you would tie you know, a triangular bandage to kind of splint an area. So I think a SAM splint takes up no real estate. It's super thin, so I keep one inside this bag. Back to the bleeding concept. This is called Quick Clot. And what Quick Clot is, is it has a, a clotting agent applied to the dressing. So if, again, if you have a severe wound, this is great. You can start wrapping it with the Quick Clot. If you have maybe a puncture wound, you, you punctured yourself with a knife, with something uh, in your backyard, whatever the case might be, you could start packing the wound with this Quick Clot and it will help to stop the bleeding very quickly. Again, it takes up very little space, uh, but something great to have. Basically, that's the main uh, center of the bag, the contents. And right here in this little section, um, I just have some more dressings. So I have some more gauze pads in different sizes. I've got some rolled gauze. Again, the average person, the average injuries that you're going to be treating at your house, they're probably going to be bleeding. If you're having a medical injury, chest pain, trouble breathing, this kit is not really gonna help you very much. Um, there is baby aspirin in the kit, so if you are having chest pain, you can take two baby aspirin. These are 81 milligram. Uh, but other than that, a medical emergency is gonna be more, you've gotta to get to, uh, to a hospital. Um, but this would be more for a traumatic type injury. Um, these are triangular bandages. These are great when you're splinting. Um, if you've got a SAM splint or a larger SAM splint and you've you know, folded it around the area that you're splinting, you then kind of tie it on with the triangular bandages. You can also make a sling with these uh, I was at a hockey game recently and somebody broke their collarbone and messed up their shoulder. So I was able to uh, make a sling and just kind of support their, their arm. This is some rolled gauze. Again, maybe you've got an injury and you just want to take some gauze pads, place the gauze pads on the injury, and then take the rolled gauze to wrap it. Um, again, very minor stuff here, but really good to have. Last item in the center of the bag, this is just some flat duct tape. You never know when the duct tape is gonna come in handy. Uh, maybe to you know, tie a, a dressing on, maybe, I don't know, you think of a reason. But duct tape is pretty small, takes up no space, and has endless uses. I did misspeak, there is actually one other item here in the bag, and again, probably not something you need every single day in your home, but if the situation arises that you do need it, you're gonna be really happy to have it. Uh, and this is a chest seal. So this would be if you have any type of injury to your chest, any puncture to your chest that maybe is letting air out like a sucking chest wound. And you would take this seal and basically stick it over the wound and there's one of the four sides that is open or the center has a vent to let air uh, out but not back in. So a chest seal is uh, pretty inexpensive and it might become invaluable at some point. Moving on to the front uh, pocket here on the bag, just a pair of shears. Again, maybe you have an injury, some type of wound, some type of hemorrhage, you need to access it. Maybe the person's unable to take off their shirt or their pants, wherever that wound might be behind. Uh, just a nice pair of medical shears, you know, can cut that right off. This was a little more expensive, even though it's a very tiny pair of shears. This is about, I don't know, seven, eight dollars. You can get shears online for two dollars, three dollars. I chose to spend a little bit more to have a slightly higher quality and a slightly smaller pair of shears, just so it can fit uh, in the bag nicely. 
right here in the front, this is uh, sodium chloride. Basically, it's an irrigation solution to help uh, clean out a wound. Um, they're really small. This is made by a company called Saljet, S-A-L-J-E-T. Uh, you can tear these apart. You can tear the top open, and you can just irrigate a wound to clean something out. Somebody has a cut, you just want to clean it up. Obviously, no, no home first aid kit is going to be complete without some Band-Aids. Band-Aids are probably the number one item that people go to for an injury. And, you know, you probably have them in the medicine cabinet. You might have them in the hall closet. But it's good to have a box here in the bag. It's good to have in the bag everything that you may need and you want just a central place that is always here. Because if you're going on vacation, if you're going to the game, you're probably not going to go up to the hall closet and say, well, let me get the Band-Aids, let me get the gauze, let me get this. You're just going to want to take a quick little kit that everything is in there and just go. Throw it in your car. Throw it in the trunk. That's kind of what this is designed for. Uh, we've got some alcohol prep pads. Again, you want to clean an area, clean the wound. Maybe you do have that EpiPen. Maybe you do need one. Before you use the EpiPen, if you have time, you want to clean that, that area with the alcohol prep pad and then inject your EpiPen. I've got some glucose here. Again, I'm an EMT. You may not be. You might be. You might be a doctor. You might be a nurse. Maybe somebody's having a diabetic emergency and you need some glucose. I keep some here in the bag. Moving on, a little Neosporin. Very small. I got this online on Amazon. I think it was like $5. Again, goes back to the wound concept. You're on vacation. You're out. You're going back to your hotel. Somebody tripped and fell. You scraped your knee. You need a Band-Aid. Here's a little Neosporin so you can, you know, make sure it doesn't get infected. These are items that you probably would not normally carry with you on vacation, but again, if you have it all in a central kit here, that would not be a, a bad idea. A little pen light. I keep a pen light here. Maybe you need to check somebody's pupils, see if they're dilated, uh, kind of see what's going on with that. Again, a tiny little roll of duct tape. Maybe you're traveling on vacation and your car uh, radiator hose is leaking. Take the duct tape from the uh, first aid kit and just patch it up. Duct tape has a million uses. This is really small. I think I bought this on Amazon or maybe it was North American Rescue. Um, really tiny, really good to have. Moving along in here, I've got some wound seal. Uh, this is a powder. You get a tiny little cut. Maybe you nick yourself and you don't need a pressure dressing. You don't need gauze pads, pads but you want to do something to try to stop the bleeding. This powder, you put a little bit uh, on your finger and then you hold it onto the wound. Very quickly, it'll stop the bleeding. I keep in here, like I said, I've got some allergies, hence the, the need for the check and inject kit or the EpiPen. I've got some Zyrtec. Again, maybe I'm out and about and my sinuses are bothering me. I'm petting somebody's dog that I'm allergic to. It's pollen season. Uh, you get stung by a bee. Uh, Zyrtec probably won't be great for the bee, but Zyrtec is pretty good to have. At least I find it helpful. Maybe you find something else helpful like aspirin, Benadryl, throw that into the kit as well. It's another prep head. Uh, next up in the front pocket, and as you can see, there's a lot of stuff. This bag, for its very small size, it can hold a decent amount. This is just your regular old pulse ox. You know, I think it's good to have, depending on what the situation might be, you might want to just take somebody's heart rate real quick, uh, and this will do that for you. This will also tell you their oxygen saturation. Maybe somebody's telling you, I'm having a little trouble breathing. Put them on the pulse ox, see what their O2 set is. The more information you can glean with your own kit, the more you can provide to incoming first responders. Um, that's almost it for the bag. There is one item left that I have in the bag. Again, I am an EMT. This is a BVM. A BVM, for those that don't know, is a bag valve mask. And when you watch uh, 911 shows, you watch ER shows, and the person's coming in in cardiac arrest and they're not breathing, you'll always see that paramedic or that EMT squeezing something, and then there's like a mask attached to the patient. What they're doing is they're breathing for the patient. And this is a BVM, and it's very compact. It's called a pocket BVM. And I don't know if you can see this on the camera here, but it's basically a bag, a valve, and a mask. And the mask goes over the person's mouth and nose. And then as you squeeze the bag, you basically push air into their lungs to breathe for them. This is a more advanced version of like a CPR pocket mask. Again, I'm an EMT. If I'm out and about at a sporting event, on vacation, even in the home if needed, God forbid, and somebody were to go down, this is much more effective than using a pocket uh, CPR mask, in my opinion. You can also hook this up to oxygen. 
So this is basically the contents of the first aid kit. So if you're going to make a first aid kit for your house, uh, for your family, for the car that you can take on vacation or whatever it is, these are the items that I have in my kit and that I generally recommend. You may have some different ones. You may, might be on some different medications. Someone in your family might have a different medical need. Throw it in the kit. You know, maybe take something out if you don't find that it's going to work for you. Maybe you don't need this uh, biological personal protective kit with a gown and a, and a red bag. Maybe that's not necessary for you. Take that out, put something in that, that will be necessary for you and your family. Again, it's great to have this kit. Once you make this kit, tell everyone in your family, the first aid kit is located in the hall closet. It's in the mud room. Uh, it's under the jackets. Put it somewhere where you know where it is, and in a moment's notice, you don't have to think about, oh gosh, is the, is the gauze pad upstairs in the, in the medicine cabinet? No, just get the first aid kit and go. You're going on vacation, take it, just throw it in the car. You go into the sporting event, throw it in the car. Whatever the event is, you've got it. It's ready to go at all times. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have found it helpful, do me a favor. It really helps the channel. Like and subscribe and leave some comments. I will make any videos that you might find interesting. If you use a piece of equipment here that you don't know how to use, ask a question. I'll do a review on it. Thanks for watching.